This is Five Live Formula One with Jack Nichols. It's time for the pole. Well, it's time for the sprint shootout ahead of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. This is the shortened qualifying session for the shortened sprint race that we will have later on this afternoon. So we had regular qualifying yesterday and Charles Leclerc took pole position and now we will have uh, a sprint shootout. Well, hopefully it'll be shorter than yesterday because uh, it was about half an hour delayed yesterday with, with various accidents and the like. So this is a completely fresh day, a completely self-contained day where we qualify and then we race and it's eight points for the win in the sprint later on today. Uh, alongside me is the BBC's chief F1 rider Andrew Benson and also Sam Bird, the former Mercedes F1 reserve driver, current racer for the Jaguar TCS racing team in the Formula E World Championship and uh, Sam, a new format, little sprint shootout, some different rules, a little sprint race action coming up. Excited? Yeah, it's different, isn't it? It's something new, Jack. Um, F1 have sort of been tinkering and tweaking its format for qualifying over the last sort of two decades, haven't they? Trying to find something that pleases the fans. Now, this is a way of giving the fans, I think, just a, that little bit more excitement. I'm, I'm interested to see how it works. Obviously, there's new regulations on what tyres people can use at what stages during this particular session. Um, Andrew will probably get into that a little bit more. But yeah, I should. I, I think this this could be good fun. And I like, I, I'm a big fan of how it now doesn't impact the Grand Prix itself. Because I think before you had that weird scenario of the, you, you know, you took pole position in qualifying, but that didn't give you pole position necessarily for the Grand Prix. I think what it does is it means that people will be more inclined to go all out in the sprint race. Yeah. Whereas people before would maybe leave a little bit in reserve knowing that where they where they finished, that was where they were going to start. So they, they wouldn't go for, you know, a last ditch move. Whereas now you can basically it's a free shot. It's going to be interesting to see the behavior of the drivers sort of down the back of the field as well a little bit because there's kind of nothing to lose but also nothing to gain if when you've only send. got points for the top eight <laughs> full send jack andrew um how, you 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 love sprint races you're a huge advocate for it <laughs> you excited um anyone who's listening to the pot who listened to the podcast by the way will know that that's the joke um i'm not anti-sprints by the way and my opinion doesn't matter i'm just a journalist reporting on what one people decide to do i thought okay, i thought um, you were going to go into a, i'm just a journalist standing in front of a bookshop kind of i thought that's where we were going with that but obviously not no um i can't see any bookshops but um anyway <laughs> no I was, it was a notting hill it was a notting hill gag oh right i see yes um anyway um yeah i mean i think everyone's interested to see how this will work out it's been long in the gestation this new sprint shootout as it's called uh, they've been talking about it in formula one for a few months and a few ideas were tossed around uh, they wanted to they, they wanted to change the sprint format from last year separate it out they from the grand prix they felt that it um it was best not to have it uh, pollute. I think that might be the verb you use. Would you use Jack? Certainly not. Would be would not be a verb that came out of Stefano Domenicali's mouth. <laughs> um, but uh, to not distract from the main Grand Prix. I mean, you can argue it both ways. But anyway, so they looked at various things. One of the things they looked at was one-shot qualifying, which people might remember from back in the sort of mid 2000s that ran for a while. Um, they abandoned that in the end. But what they've done is they've shortened each of the sessions. So it's the same as a normal qualifying session, but instead of 18, 15, and 12 minutes, the sessions run 12 10 and 8 minutes and they've also restricted the tires so you have to run new medium tires in uh this sprint shootout in in q1 and q2 and you have to run new softs in q3 that has thrown up a rather amusing anomaly so as it happens norris and Sonoda um have, have both got into q3 in the in the main qualifying yesterday but they've used up all their new soft tires so because they got into Q3. Yes. Now they, they made a strategic choice to do that because obviously that's the qualifying for the race and that's the most important for the Grand Prix and that's the most important one it pays the most points. But it means they've got no new softs for um, Q3 and the rules say you have to run new softs. So does that mean they can't run in Q3 today right now? No. Actually as it turns out this is Formula 1 so there's a loophole in the rules of course there is. Nothing could stop them running wets. Now, of course, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but 
theoretically... What do you think is going to happen? According to the rules, if Norris and Sonoda do both get into Q3, they could have their private shootout for ninth place on wet tyres. <laughs> but what will happen? Instead, they yeah, just, just don't I run. would imagine they'll not run, but... Um, because it's possible not all the teams have spotted this loophole, but yeah. I know I know some have, so there you are. Um, cars heading out onto the circuit now then. So we've got a 12-minute uh, session that is all about getting through the into the top 15. For those of you syncing up, we've got 11 minutes and 40, 39, 38, 37 seconds on the clock. I, I yeah, if, you know, I... I yeah, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite torn about the whole sprint thing. And I was having a think yesterday. I wouldn't be against. I, I think, yeah, I think the sprint. I think we could go more crazy with it. But it feels like you can commit you prefer, either way. Would you prefer, let's say, a reverse grid? I would prefer, I would, for example, you do qualifying for the Grand Prix. And then the grid for the sprint is the top 10 reversed. I think that would be interesting. And then you only have one qualifying session. You don't have to mess around with the second one. The qualifying in the Grand Prix is still intact. But then if you reverse that top 10 for a half hour race, you're getting some fun. You are, but getting all the teams to agree to that will be impossible. It's it just yeah. never, ever going to work. There's too many manufacturers, too much money involved, Jack, for people to say, oh, we're just going to flip the order. I think that that they works very well in Formula 2, it works well in F3, but I think for Formula 1 to, to go down that same route is... I, I just can't see it happening. On the topic of today, though, Jack, obviously after yesterday, a man that needs to just have a better day today for a little bit of his own self-confidence, in my opinion, is Nick de Vries. Yep, De Vries put it in the wall down at turn three yesterday. So we'll see uh, on his on his first push lap, I think. So we'll see what he can do today. We were talking about Nick actually uh, yesterday, Sam, and um, Rebecca Clancy and I were both saying that he's probably under quite a bit of pressure already uh, because of the way Red Bull are. He's not been matching Sonoda for pace and he's come in as a sort of safe pair of hands and a very experienced, accomplished driver and he's not quite doing the job that they would have expected of him. Nick is a, is a world-class driver. Obviously, I've raced against him for a few years now. Um, and he, he is absolutely good enough to handle himself in Formula One. But as I've experienced probably over the last year, Jack, when I've tensed up and when, when I've over-tried, over the lap time isn't there. You try and go finding lap time, it's, the likelihood is, is that you're going to make mistakes. Instead of just being relaxed and having that inner confidence and letting the lap time come to him, he's trying to force things, in my opinion, and that's not how to drive at your best. It just really isn't. That's where mistakes creep in. Can you see that, Sam, when you're watching him, him trying to force things? And what does that mean? It, Can you it, explain well, that? When, when, when he stood there, it doesn't look like he's having fun. It, it looks like he's a little bit tense and uptight and of course he is it's formula one there's a lot of pressure and it's high stakes stuff but so is so is a world championship in formula e although i think it is a slightly different mindset for him this is formula one is seen and rightly so as the pinnacle of motorsport so with that comes a lot of pressure but you know the top drivers seem to manage that and right now i think nick in his first year is struggling with that pressure how much expectation do you think is it comes into it? So would, would, would Nick have come into the season thinking, right, I'm going into Alpha Tauri, I'm alongside Yuki Tsunoda, you know, this is, this is a doable, this is a doable thing, rather than, you know, if he's coming in alongside Hamilton at Mercedes, you know it's going to be, like, is that, can, could you be overconfident going into it? Because he's a confident guy. He, he is a confident guy. And I think that the drive that he did at Monza last year in the Williams, made his career for Formula One and it was the best thing for him having said that it's a bit of a poison chalice because right now I think it's the worst thing for him at the same time because the expectation was he was going to come in and he was going to deliver and be at a very high level straight away from the get-go and that hasn't been the case he's been outpaced and outperformed by Yuki Tsunoda and now the pressure is on and, and it's very difficult now he just needs 
to knuckle down and have a decent string of results as we see Lewis Hamilton go to the top with seven minutes to go, Jack, on a 144.739. Uh, pole position yesterday was a 1 minute 40.2 from Charles Leclerc. So the um, time's a little slower at the moment, but naturally first running of the day for the F1 cars and they're on the medium tyres, all of these drivers. Verstappen, Leclerc, Perez all on quick laps at the moment. Hamilton quickest on a 44.7, only a tenth quicker than Magnussen and two tenths quicker than Sargent. So I would expect those lap times to come down quite a lot. Leclerc, for example, 1.2 seconds up on Hamilton. Perez goes quickest on a 1 minute 44.5. Here comes Leclerc towards the line. I think this is going to send him a long way up the order and Verstappen goes fastest now on a 43.5 which is a second quicker than Perez and Hamilton Leclerc goes quicker still on a 1 minute 43.3 so two tenths faster than Verstappen and I think there's a real chance that if Ferrari take pole in the sprint they can win the sprint I think so with the shortened format I think their tyre deg is worse than um, Red Bull but they should be able to hang on in a sprint format um, although Red Bull are very quick in a straight line. One thing we've just spotted, actually, myself and Mr. Benson, is the Aston Martin's DRS yet again looking like it might be a troublesome aspect on the car this afternoon. I think it was Alonso's DRS didn't open. Both of them. Both of them didn't open, actually, on the main straight. And uh, Stroll was struggling yesterday with, with DRS issues, too. Yep, we have got five minutes to go in the first part of qualifying. Charles Leclerc is quickest at the moment. He took pole position yesterday for the Grand Prix on Sunday, but today is an entirely self-contained day, basically. A little qualifying session now, and then later on this afternoon at half past two, a half an hour sprint race for fewer points, but just to give the fans a little bit more action on circuit. So Leclerc quickest at the moment, and we've got uh, full coverage on Sports Extra. Benson. Just to clarify that, I just asked Aston Martin if the... Um, sorry, Sam, you're waving at something. Oh, it's De Vries, is it? Uh, who's gone, or is it Sonoda? Sorry, it's Sonoda, I think, who's gone straight on down at the... Uh, the left-hander at the top of the hill. No, I was right first time. It was De Vries who's gone straight on at turn three. Which is where he crashed yesterday. Yeah. Uh, just to finish that point on Aston Martin, I asked him whether the DRS was broken again because we saw Fernando Alonso come over the line, Sam and I, in the DRS zone with his rear wing closed. And uh, I've got the answer back that that's, it's working, or at least that's, that's what they're saying. Uh, but there were yellow flags that stopped him using it on his first lap. Uh, OK, so uh, that makes sense. We'll keep an eye on that one. Four minutes and 16 seconds to go. Uh, Albon goes third fastest now. At the moment, the driver's in the... Uh, Gasly's back in the pits. I was going to say, Jack, Gasly is another person who needs a good day today because he had made a right mess of yesterday. It wasn't his fault that, well, they claimed it was a hydraulic leak uh, that caused the massive fire that he had in practice, <laughs> but uh, it was a massive fire in the engine bay. Um, and... Uh, lots of work from the mechanics between the, between the two sessions and then he went and stacked it on uh, early in Q1 um, so that won't have impressed Alpine I'm sure so he needs to have a clean day as well and with the tyres Andrew it, uh, on the mediums on this session they can only uh, they've only got time to run one set you can't come in and put on another new set well it certainly looks like that's the strategy they're using I think yeah. they, theoretically you could have time 12 minutes in this session at least is enough time to do to go out do a lap or two come back put a new set on and then go out again but I think uh, it's what's the temperature so it's actually the temperature's quite high at 48 and a half but um, Azerbaijan's got not a very abrasive sur surface so it's quite... Perez actually when we were just doing that up in the news said it's very very low grip out right here. so I think they're probably because they're mediums they're probably just thinking we'll run them and get them up to temperature and that'll be quicker than coming in for a new set Q3 um, the problem is it's only eight minutes and because the track's so long I think they probably will only have to run one set of tyres okay which maybe the means they'll only do one lap and they'll just sit in the garage for four minutes. So this, this whole entertainment thing is really going well. We've got an hour of F1 cars on track today. Anyway, uh, less than three minutes to go. At the moment, the drivers eliminated Norris, Bottas, Sonoda, Gasly and De Vries. De Vries hasn't got a proper lap time in yet because he went in at turn three deep. Gasly is still in the pits in the Alpine. He's, he's done. So I don't think well, they, they had to fix the car after yesterday's crash at turn three. And I think... It's not 
ready would be my sort of presumption because Gasly's back in the pits and um, is not going to have time to get back out and do another lap. So Gasly will be eliminated in Q1. Um, across the line comes Carlos Sainz to go fourth fastest, just slightly slower than Lewis Hamilton. Uh, eight tenths of a second slower than his teammate Charles Leclerc though. Sainz a little off the pace yesterday compared to Leclerc and the same again so far today. A big shout out to Williams as well, currently running in sixth and seventh with Albon just ahead of his rookie teammate Logan Sargent. Yeah, it looked like they were going to be strong yesterday but ended up slipping out in Q2. Less than two minutes to go. So everybody's starting a lap now. This will be their final lap. And Russell's just come across the line. And I think that is his final lap that he's just completed. So up into fifth place for Russell. Um, Sonoda is a driver who needs to put a good lap in. He is 18th quickest. Mate qualified seventh on the grid for the Grand Prix on Sunday. So he's got a bit more pace in there. He's just coming across the line now to start his final flying lap. Esteban Ocon is trying to keep out of everybody's way. Oscar Piastri comes through the middle sector in the McLaren and he is nine tenths down on Charles Leclerc after the middle sector so he's got a shot here at Im uh, improving he's 14th as it stands his teammate Norris is eighth the Australian swings it through the fast sweepers and then heads down towards the line Lance Stroll jumps up into eighth position now Stroll yeah Stroll up into eighth drops Norris down to ninth place here comes Piastri only goes 13th so it's going to be tight for him Ocon has made a mistake at the uh, at the end of the first sector so he has had to back out of it and will get another lap in though so he started a push first sector rock on he's backed out and now starting another lap what's Sonoda up to reasonable first sector for him Albon coming through the final corner now oh and in the wall is uh, Sargent Logan Sargent has hit the barriers and that is going to be the end of his session and the end of the session red flag is out at the penultimate corner at turn 15 Logan Sargent has hit the rear right of the Williams against the wall. The re right rear wheel is torn off. Red flag is out. So that means Joe and Bottas, Sonoda, Gasly and De Vries will be the five drivers eliminated. Both Alfa Romeos, both Alfa Tauris, so all four Alphas, and Pierre Gasly in the Alpine. Red flag. Oh, that's going to be a lot of work, Jack. A lot of work for the mechanics down at Williams. Um, that, that car, will it even get out for the race? That's the question later on today, because there's a lot of damage there. That might be gearbox. Oof, tricky one. They've got half a day to get it fixed, to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> half a day. But you must... Would you be that... Would you be that fussed about getting out for this break? Is that a stupid yes, thing to say? Yes, but I, I think he will be. Uh, right now, as of right now, obviously it's only the Q1 for the sprint but he sits in 11th place he's yeah, finished true. the session in 11th place this was an opportunity at this track given the advantages that the Williams has I think in a straight line and being quite slippery in a straight line to score a couple of points this weekend now his chances have really been uh, you know taken away from him definitely for today but let's see about tomorrow as well Confirmation that Q1 will not be restarted, so the order will finish. Leclerc, Verstappen, Hamilton, Sainz, Russell, the top five. Alonso, Perez, Stroll, Norris, Albon, the top ten. And uh, Sergeant, Magnussen, Piastri, Ocon and Hulkenberg, the top 15. Eliminated, Joe, Bottas, Sonoda, Gasly and De Vries. I think that uh, Sergeant is just sort of gently rolling down the hill. We're about to see what happened. Coming into the left-hander. Oh, there's... He's gone in too deep, hit the wall. There was a Ferrari lurking on the inside. Is that a bit a bit distracting traffic-wise for Sergeant? I think... I'm in the wall. Okay, are you okay? Are you okay? Man, the Ferraris were in the middle of the road. Well, he thinks so. Uh, I, I don't, saw that. I don't think you, you can okay? blame the Ferrari, to be honest. I, I get yeah, that yeah. there is an aero disadvantage, but... These drivers are some of the best in the world. You, you take that into consideration. I know you're pushing to the absolute limits, but the Ferrari wasn't... I don't think it was in the middle of the road, really. It was fully to the inside, and it cut the corner to get out of the way. So at the point where he needed the downforce mid-corner, there was no Ferrari there. 
He's gone in really hard, that accident. It's not, and it's not just the classic turn 15 accident is you, you go in a bit too fast, the car steps out of the rear and you clip the wall with the rear tire, but he's gone in front first. Well, it's sort of at an angle, so not, not straight on, but you know he's caught it at a glancing angle, front right first, and then that's smacked the right rear into the wall. And as Sam was saying, it, the, 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 rear caught, the rear of the car is sort of half detached. It looks like the uh, gearbox has possibly been ripped off the engine. Uh, certainly, there's a lot and a lot of damage at the back of that car. And um, fortunately, in inverted commas, for the Williams team at least, looking on the, the uh, silver lining to every cloud, they've got four hours in between qualifying and race uh, to get that sorted out. Whereas normally between qualifying, between if you have an accident in practice, for example, on a Saturday, before a normal qualifying session, you've only got a couple of hours. So they should be able to do it time-wise, I would have thought, but uh, it is still an awful lot of work. But getting it, getting the car, put, you know, getting a car ready and together or getting it finely tuned and and properly set up is a different thing because probably doing a set down and getting all the, the corner weights absolutely spot on, that would take another 40 minutes. This might be a really long job. So Logan Sargent has climbed out of the car. The cheers you could hear were for him. But I don't think he feels particularly like being applauded at the moment as they uh, get rid of that car. Hopefully it won't actually delay the session too much because already the, 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 the crane is out on the circuit. They'll lift it, hoik it around the corner and, and we should be getting going again fairly soon. I've got to say, it's, it's, it's the worst feeling as a driver when you have had an accident. Um, oh, and everyone's clapping and, you. And, <laughs> and you're getting a, you, you get clapped by the crowd. And, and it's really nice that yeah. the, the crowd do that. It is, it is lovely. But as a driver, when you've, just had, when you've just made a mistake and they're applauding, internally you're, you're seething. Yeah. You're absolutely furious. As if the, the applause feels sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. They're yeah, all well slow done. clapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, Q1 done. Uh, Andrew, so you don't believe that if, 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 if Leclerc takes pole position, you're not sure he can win this, the sprint? He's got, he's got more of a chance, hasn't he? Well, more of a chance than in the Grand Prix, yeah. yes. I just think that the... Um, look, I don't know. I mean, listening to Leclerc after qualifying yesterday, you know, he was talking about how they'd made a step forward performance-wise in Australia, Ferrari... Um, they didn't really get to see it on his car because um, he got he crashed out on the first lap in a little sort of pincer incident with Lance Stroll. Um, and but Carlos Sainz drove a really strong race in Melbourne, and he was sort of he caught after he had to make an extra pit stop because of he'd stopped early, and then the safety car was bad timing for him, the first safety car. Um, but he caught up his Sonoda's radio. Leg. No! Leg. Charge up. Oh, who's Okay, that's it for us, P18. You're kidding me! He was basically just about to finish his lap, Yuki Tsunoda, when the red flag came out, and so that's why he's down in 18th place and annoyed. Yeah, and that saves us the wet tire shootout between him and Norris in Q3 that we were talking about, that probably wasn't going to happen anyway. Anyway, and Sainz caught up with Hamilton and Alonso, who were fighting for second place in that race. So, that, so basically, Ferrari felt that, in terms of race pace, because they made a quite a significant setup change uh, approach um, setup approach change for Australia compared to the first two races where they'd really struggled with tyre degradation in the races um, and it, they feel that it worked well and they didn't get a chance to fully show how well it had worked so we don't know yet what their race pace really is going to be especially Leclerc who's looking absolutely on fire uh, this weekend in Baku it has to be said in the land of fire in the land of fire yeah um, just looks fantastic um, so maybe they can hold off a Red Bull uh, in a, in, in a, on the track with the longest straight in inverted commas uh, on the calendar but the Red Bull is so strong and so fast in the straight line and has such a large DRS offset compared to the other cars. Um, I, I just think it's going to be really difficult for him to hold uh, Verstappen off. So we are waiting for Q2 to get underway. It will be slightly delayed, um, but hopefully not too much longer because the Logan Sargent 
Williams has just been taken out the back. It looked as though the marshals had checked the Tech Pro barrier up at turn 15 and, and seemed satisfied. So hopefully it should be imminent. Uh, eliminated, as a reminder, Joe in the Alfa Romeo, Bottas 17th, 18th for Sonoda, 19th for Gasly, and 20th for Nick de Vries. Thank you for all your interactions on hashtag BBCF1. Uh, good question from Matthew. Interested to know if we count a sprint shootout as part of the qualifying head-to-head -head throughout the season. No, Benson says no. Okay. I'm not counting it on my spreadsheet anyway. <laughs> I've done it already from yesterday. Okay, fine. So if so if so if Science out qualifies Leclerc by a second today, that counts for nothing in your books. I don't think he's going to, judging by the Q1. But uh... it's a little bit like saying, uh, do the the sprint race wins count as Formula One victories on yeah. the all-time list. No, they, they yeah. don't. True. Fair. Good comparison. Right. Session will start in a little under three minutes' time, and everybody is straight out to queue up at the end of the pit lane. Um, well, not quite everybody. Lance Stroll is still in the pits, just dabbing his eyes with a flannel as he gets ready to leave the garage. And uh, the McLaren's still staying in the pits as well, but many of the others very, very keen to get out on circuit as quickly as possible especially now that these cars I think all of them can be fired up can't they now from uh, from the electronics inside the car so they can go and sit at the end of the pit lane and turn them off basically rather than uh, in the olden days where they would have overheated got an update from Aston Martin on DRS oh, guess yeah. what there is an issue on Fernando Alonso's car and okay. they're working to try and fix it not on Stroll's car it seems which might explain why he's less than a tenth behind Alonso in that session rather than the usual four tenths oh, that means Alonso's not going to be so swift in a straight line oh, oh there we go that's the first one of the day <laughs> I actually I got a bit Karun's been doing this all weekend on, on, the, on the telly. Well, Back not all weekend, but yesterday. I think him and Crofty have really gone for it, haven't they, apparently? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. look, I think it's embarrassing. I'm not going to be doing it. That joke was tailored to me. Ah! <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. Look, Karun can do what he wants, but it's not for me. Um, Crofty can also do what he wants, of course. <laughs> Any, anyone can do what they want, but uh, yeah, right. <laughs> One minute, 20 seconds till... SQ2 starts. So McLaren, Jack. Uh, I, I was under the impression that they were put, they were pinning a lot of hopes on Baku as a as a race. You know, they they were bringing big upgrades and and they thought that they were going to come to this one and make a big leap up the grid. And they they've made they have made an improvement, but it's not uh, it's not quite as strong as what I think they hoped because. In the world of F1, nobody sleeps. Everybody is always improving. So they were already playing it down a bit on Thursday. They were saying, look, this is where we should have started the season. Uh, because just a very brief backstory, they realized in the course of the winter that they'd missed the development opportunity with the floor edge, um, which is a really powerful uh, control of the uh, downforce on these new uh, ground effect cars that have been introduced since last year. Um, and they needed to reset their development approach. So they started the year with a sort of a car that was not as good as it could have been, and this is the car that they should have started the season with if they spotted this floor development area earlier when they feel they should have done, which is partly why technical director James Key has left, I think, um, or been dismissed um, effectively. So, yes, you're right, Sam. They, I think... They, I think it's a bit early to, to judge. It does look like they've made a step forward. He, Lando Norris was comfortably into Q3 yesterday and uh, it looked decent. Um, but as you say, everyone's moving forward all the time. So we'll, um, we'll have to see. I think the other thing to say about McLaren in their defence is they felt this was just the first step. It was like the opening of the door, if you like. So and the program's going to be very tight in this session. So if anyone's delaying you, just, just get past them. That's Hamilton being told by Peter Bonington to get a get a shift on on in this 10-minute uh, uh, sprint uh, Q2 session. Um, so they feel like this is the opening of the door, and there's a whole, you know, a whole development upgrade path that they can go on after this. So the second part of qualifying underway: nine minutes and 15 seconds on the clock, and everybody out on a new set of medium tyres. Interesting that Hamilton being told it's urgent, you know, to get on track, and the only people last on circuit are going to be the two Ferraris that are rolling out of the pit lane now. Charles Leclerc followed by Carlos Sainz. Well, dependent on the speed of the outlap and the cool-down laps, 
you could get an extra lap. Given the, the amount of time that they've got now, you could get an extra lap in comparison to other people. We've seen that people are getting quicker and quicker through the session on these medium tyres, so that could be crucial. If, if Hamilton can get out in front, um, you know, uh, whereas the Ferraris have waited quite a while, will that pay in, in Hamilton's favour going to the latter stages of, of Q2? Eight minutes and 22 seconds to go. Fernando, uh, sorry, Sergio Perez is going to be the first driver to come through and come across the line. Uh, Sargent naturally won't be taking part in this session, so it's just four drivers that will be eliminated. Um, see whether the other Williams of Alex Albon can make it into the, into the top ten. So Perez comes through the first corner now. He was fairly close to the to the fight yesterday Sergio Perez his pace has been pretty solid all all weekend well he's always been strong on on street circuits and um, you know he he does adore coming to to Baku he's he's had some great results here in the past he won he was it last year he won here or the year before uh, the year before Four, the year before, yeah. So he's... Oh, last year. Was, uh, it last was last year. It was last year. Um, we have the same management group, actually. We're, we're both managed by the same by the same people, and they always say that when, you know, the, the week of Baku, uh, Checo's really, really up for the fight. Seven minutes and 17 seconds to go. Perez coming through the left-hander at the castle section now, up through the right, and then swinging back left again at turn 12. Now on the flat-out blast towards the tricky downhill left-hander where Logan Sargent crashed a little earlier on at the end of the first part of qualifying. Uh, Verstappen is quicker than Hamilton, much quicker than Russell, and a little quicker than Perez through the first sector. Charles Leclerc is just starting his first flying lap now. Seven minutes to go. Perez through the final turn. Yellow flag out there in the second sector, so that will scupper a couple of people's laps potentially if they're coming through that middle sector when the yellow flag is out Perez now coming down to cut the timing beam and we'll see what he can do it's uh, Hulkenberg in the Haas who I think has just gone in a bit deep at turn 7 which we saw a couple of drivers do yesterday but the McLarens, Albon, Alonso, Stroll are all coming through that yellow flag area so they might not have rapid laps on this opening run uh, Hulkenberg has got back on his way through the castle section now, so he hasn't hit the wall, he's back on his way, but that will have caused some drivers to have had to back off, maybe including Russell, because he's ended up 1.7 seconds off the pace of Max Verstappen. This is what happened to Hulkenberg, coming through the, the left and the right at turn six and seven, down towards the tight right-hander on the brakes. Oh, locks up the outside, the left front there, and very nearly nudges the wall. But... Nothing too dramatic in the end for Hulkenberg, except he's going to have a nice flat spot on both fronts, actually. So Hulkenberg straight on. We'll keep an eye on what happens to him. Um, Verstappen quickest, Perez second, Hamilton third, Russell fourth, Ocon fifth, Magnussen sixth, Norris goes seventh. But again, yeah, he had to back off. So all of the lap times coming in now are not particularly representative. Uh, there is one coming in from Charles Leclerc, and he goes second fastest, a 1 minute 42.8, four tenths slower than Max Verstappen. Carlos Sainz does a 43.0, which is two tenths slower than his teammate Charles Leclerc. So five minutes to go. Eliminated at the moment would be Norris, Albon, Piastri, and Hulkenberg. But all of those drivers basically got caught up in the, in the Hulkenberg incident. Five minutes to go in this second part of qualifying. Once again, it's the Red Bulls and the Ferraris that are up at the top. Um, so, Hulkenberg stayed out. He didn't come into the pits at the at the end of that lap. So he's he stayed out. And I think is he on a push lap now? Thirty six eight. Yeah, he's on a reasonable push lap at the moment. Nico Hulkenberg, as he tries to get a lap on the board because he lost fifty seconds on that uh, on that last lap with that with that error. Norris is coming through the middle sector, also on a push lap as he tries to get something on the board because he's down in 11th place at the moment. Through that middle sector he comes and what's he doing? It's, uh, it's a 41-7 in the middle sector. Only four tenths down on, on Verstappen, four tenths, eight tenths. So 
It's got a reasonable shot of maybe getting in with the sort of Mercedes mix here. In fact, I think this will be a sixth place for Norris as he comes across the line. Piastri's improving also. So is Albert and Hulkenberg. But I think initially this will be a solid lap for Norris. But look at the amount of lap time that he will hemorrhage in the last sector, Jack, compared to Verstappen in the Red Bull. That Red Bull is so strong in a straight line, which is, you know, I, I completely agree with what Andrew said about um, Leclerc versus Verstappen later on. I, I actually, I don't see how the Ferrari can keep the Red Bull behind. I just don't. If he's within a second, a second and a half, he's coming through into turn one. Lap, uh, three minutes to go. Stroll goes up into eighth quickest. Norris went seventh. Alonso went up into fourth place. And uh, Alba ninth, Piastri tenth. And then you've... Sorry, Jack, carry on. Then you've got Russell, Ocon, Magnussen and Hulkenberg, the rest of the runners there. And Russell, of course, was eliminated yesterday in Q2. Verstappen's in the pits. He's done for this session. But... Russell needs to find a bit of lap time here and a much better showing from Alonso. Why? Where was Alonso yesterday? Uh, he was sixth, but this was he had the DRS problem, remember? Oh, yeah, of course. So there's a couple of things to point out in that session, and you've kind of alluded to them very briefly there, Jack. Russell seemed to be struggling a little bit compared to Hamilton today, I would say. Um, he was unlucky yesterday. Uh, he got knocked out in Q3, but he was only four thousandths behind Hamilton, uh, who only just snuck through into Q3 before going fifth. Um, so Russell's on another lap now. Um, Alonso, it looks like his DRS might have been fixed because he's suddenly very quick. He's almost exactly the set of a few, few hundredths off Perez with uh, his fourth place there, Alonso. So um, that's, uh, that goes to show perhaps what the Aston Martin could have done if the rear, rear wing was working properly yesterday. Russell goes up into seventh place. Across the line comes Magnussen. He only goes up into 12th. So it's Alex Albon who's on the bubble at the moment in the Williams. Two minutes to go. And I think that Albon will get another lap in. He's on a cool-down lap at the moment, and then he will do another push. Ocon is the sound you can hear. The Alpine driver, 13th at the moment, about to come across the line. Can he jump up the order and push Albon out? No. 11th for Ocon, ahead of Piastri, Magnussen, Hulkenberg and Sargent, the five drivers that will be knocked out as it stands, but we'll probably have one more lap from all of those ones. It's worth pointing out as well, we were talking about McLaren's upgrade earlier with Sam. Now, this Alpine have also got quite a significant upgrade, which they were very bullish about coming into the weekend. Yesterday, it was a bit difficult to see how that was working out because they had such a messy day. Uh, today, doesn't look that great. There's Ocon struggling to get into the top 10, so they don't look like they've made that much progress. Carlos Sainz at turn 15. Uh, looks like he might have stopped. There's a yellow flag out. Charles Leclerc is coming across the line now, and he improves to go 800 slower than Max Verstappen. Sainz has got going again, so it was just a runoff area for Carlos Sainz up at turn 15. He's got away with it. Hasn't hit the barriers by the looks of things. Car looks relatively intact. He is fifth quickest, so he's not in any danger here. Carlos Sainz, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't suggest, but this is what happened to him, Sam, up at turn 15. Oh, lock up on the right front, straight on. And and the difference is, is that he's he's made the decision early to use the escape road. It's when drivers just have that split second thought of I can still make the corner that we then see these issues on the exits and it, and it is apparent that it is always the two corners in Baku it's turn 3 and turn 15, 15 that are the two problem corners here so 13 seconds to go Hamilton is improving, Piastri is improving he's just come through the first sector and, and done a reasonable run there Norris is improving who's currently 8 in fact Behind the top five, you've got the two Mercedes in sixth and seventh, Hamilton Russell, eighth for Norris, ninth for Stroll, tenth for Albon. Outside of the top ten, you've got Ocon, Piastri, Magnussen and Hulkenberg. Magnussen has pitted, so he's not going to be making it through into the final part of qualifying. So, uh, I don't know why he's pitted Kevin Magnussen, because the checkered flag, well, the checkered flag is out now, but he didn't do a push lap last time around, so... Maybe he, that was his last run and, and didn't have anything else left in the tyres. Hamilton goes up into fifth place, getting ahead of Carlos Sainz, six tenths slower than Max Verstappen. Uh, Ocon comes into the pits, so that's his race run. He won't be going through either. So Piastri and Hulkenberg are the only two drivers that could improve. Hulkenberg will be first across the line, and he goes up to 11th place, so he's eliminated. It's Piastri. Can Oscar Piastri knock 
knocked someone out of the top 10. He's up into 10th place at the moment, so it's Piastri or Stroll that will be eliminated, along with Hülkenberg, Ocon, Magnussen and Sargent. Stroll is getting a wonderful slipstream from Fernando Alonso, his teammate. Time to perfection from Aston Martin, and as a result, that jumps Stroll up into 7th place. So Piastri eliminated, he'll be 11th on the grid. 12th will be Nico Hülkenberg, 13th will be Esteban Ocon, 14th Kevin Magnussen, 15th Logan Sargent. Uh, Sainz finds a bit more time on his second run, but he's still four tenths away from Leclerc. But those are the five drivers that will be eliminated. So McLaren a little bit more up in the in the mix. Norris through to Q3, but really strong job from Alex Albon, eighth fastest in that session. Yeah, again, he's looking. He's he's driving really well at the moment. Okay, he made a mistake in in Australia, but he's really established himself as the the go-to team leader now at Williams um, of, of course he is because he's, he's next to a rookie but he's he's respected within the Formula 1 paddock and he's driving extremely well so the driver's through to the final are we calling it what's the official nomenclature for for, for pole position is it still pole position you're on pole but you're on pole for the sprint so it's not it's not a Okay, but I can still say pole position. You can, but it's an interesting question for all those, the, alluding to those stats questions you were asking earlier. Does this count towards, you know, the driver out qualifying the other driver or what have you? Yeah. It's like, it's a pole, but it's not a pole. And and a win, but not a win. is a win, but it's, yeah. it's not a Grand Prix yeah, win. Yeah. Exactly. Because well, the other thing I'm struggling with is I was thought, I thought I had to call this the sprint shootout, but everything on the graphics says sprint qualifying. Well, no, there it says sprint shootout, but there it says sprint qualifying. So I didn't know if, if there was a, uh, you know, this is technically SQ2. So I don't understand. Uh, Oscar, your P11, Fernando, Toad, Stroll, and he jumped us at the end. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. So that was Piastri uh, getting informed of the Alonso tow that uh, he gave Lance Stroll. Even with that toe, Stroll still four tenths off Alonso, which is interesting. Yeah. And that was the, that toe really did get Stroll through because he only beat uh, Oscar Piastri by what, less than a tenth of a second. So, cars are queued up at the end of the pit lane. Andrew Benson, is Norris going out in this session? No. He just can't. Exactly. Well, he could go out on well, wets. Go on wets. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's no one to compete with on the wets. There's going to be no point. Yeah, good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you're so good job, everyone. That was Alex Albon's radio. Actually, ended the session ninth because someone uh, improved right at the right at the end there. But so the fight for yeah. So that was all I was saying because it's a sprint shootout, not sprint qualifying. Except you call it both. I didn't know if they'd got a special name for the pole position of the sprint like a sprint like a he's going to take the sprint the the, the, the sprint front we, that hasn't been communicated so far so fine just check. we're going to find out fine we? just check <laughs> interesting one guys tell me what you think Lance Stroll is clearly struggling a little bit this weekend Fernando is now looking sharp with the fact that he's got DRS active and, and working again what if Lance Stroll gives Fernando a toe down that main straight I mean, right now, he's he's in a group where it's very, very tight. It could be the difference between him getting second or third or sixth and seventh. Could be, assuming, yeah, if that DRS is still working in this session. I mean, I have to say, just a, a sort of caveat, I don't think Stroll's particularly struggling this weekend. He's already three-tenths off uh, Alonso in qualifying on average this year over four, over four races. So this is about the, the standard of where he is. Yeah, but you can't judge him. You can't judge him on this qualifying. If you're not putting it in your stats, you can't judge him on it. I've, that's not. I'm not judging him on that. I'm judging him on the ones that we've already had. Sam was judging him on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, yes, it's an interesting idea. I wonder if they'll do it. The problem is, well, you've got a political issue there, haven't you? If you're Slightly. Aston Martin and the dad's running the team, are you going to ask the guy, to, your son, to sacrifice his qualifying so that the quicker driver can go faster? Probably Joe, not. what I will say, Joe slings on hashtag BBCF1 says, uh, Stroll still didn't have DRS. 
I didn't I didn't spot it at the end there, but Alonso does have DRS and Stroll, and so that would explain some of the gap if that is. I, I don't know whether case. that's true. I'm not saying it's not, but uh, I was told by Aston Martin that it was working in Q1, and the only issue was on Alonso's car. Right. Uh, so let's find out. I haven't had. A, I've asked subsequent questions to the team. I haven't yeah, had yeah. answers yet, but. Um, Correspondent might be right, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, Jago also doesn't think Stroll's DRS was open, so... And you've got to trust Jago. 52 minutes... Uh, 52 seconds before the session gets underway. And uh, the McLaren... Norris is sitting at the wheel of the car. So, we'll see what happens. Everybody else is queuing up. I'm interested that they're queued up at the end of the pits on the softs. I mean, I guess softs... Because I understand why you do lap after lap on the mediums. Well, we'll see. Maybe they think they can get out. They, ca they, can't, they can't do an out, push in, change tires, out, well, push in. They haven't uh, got time in eight minutes. Andrew, is he allowed to do an out and a straight back in and effectively scrub a set of tires that could then help him for later on in the weekend? Well, he doesn't have any new tires to scrub. He doesn't have any yeah. new tires to scrub, OK. So, yeah, he ain't, he ain't got no scrubs for uh, Lando Norris. Three two, one. The light goes green at the end of the pit lane. SQ3. Sprint qualifying three. Sprint shootout three. The final part of qualifying to decide pole position for the sprint race later on today gets underway. Straight out of the pits goes Max Verstappen at the front of the field, followed by Sergio Perez. And everybody now in this final part has to go out on a new set of soft tyres. And Verstappen is the man at the front of the queue, weaving around a little bit to try and get temperature to the tyres. So that's quite, it's quite a rare thing to be honest. Quite often in you know modern F1, you crawl around on the on the outlap. But with the new regulations on the on the the temperatures for the for the tyre blankets, and also he was sat in the pit lane for quite a long time then to get the track position. He doesn't want to get stuck in traffic, and he certainly doesn't want to get in the dirty air of another car. For him to deliver the perfect lap, he needs to be out on his own, because he knows that when he's on his own, he can put it on pole at will. Hamilton's really keen to get past Albon. It's the two Red Bulls, and then it is the Williams of Albon, and then it's Hamilton, and Hamilton's really, really keen to, to, to get past as they climb up through the castle section now Nando Norris is still in the pits so he hasn't left the pits so an update from Aston Martin it seems our correspondents were right There's an, there are ongoing issues with the DRS on both cars so I don't know exactly what DRS is working when on which Aston Martin but uh, I'll find out as soon as I can we'll just have to try and use our eyes right battle of the pole not quite sure how this is going to play out with six minutes to go probably just a push lap then a cool down lap and then another push lap because it's a long circuit here. Uh, just to make, just to f finish that point on Aston Martin, this is a real problem for them potentially looking forward to the sprint race and yeah. the Grand Prix. If they've got a l new low downforce rear wing, it seems that they've got a massive problem with the DRS mechanism on that wing. They're going to be hugely exposed in, the, in the, both races if, if they can't fix that. I'm always surprised. DRS feels like the kind of simplest part of a Formula One car. Is it actually incredibly complex or is it like it feels like it's just a very mechanical thing? Well, it's very mechanical, but if you think about the forces involved, if yeah. you think about the downforce acting on a Formula 1 rear wing, and you've got this little mechanism, the hydraulically powered, that's got to flip the wing up against those forces, which then changes the forces, and then it's got to hold it in that position where it's trying to go back down again. Can't be easy, can it? Yeah, but they've had it for 10 years. Yeah, but each time, each, each rear wing that's new is a whole new mathematical problem, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. Five minutes and 15 seconds to go. Uh, Charles Leclerc just starting his lap now. Carlos Sainz will be the last driver across the line. Verstappen in the first sector is fractionally quicker than his teammate Sergio Perez, comfortably quicker than Hamilton and Russell in the Mercedes. Uh, Alonso is a 36.9 in the first sector, so that's a very slow first sector for Alonso, so maybe his DRS is back to not working, potentially. Five minutes to go. Perez coming through the final corner now, through turn 16 and then out onto the sweeps that take him towards the finish line and the timing line. Verstappen through the middle sector, four tenths slower than Perez in the middle sector, Max Verstappen. So a bit of an error in there somewhere. Perez coming towards the line, and he sets a 1 minute 41.876. So still 
just about two seconds slower than than we were going yesterday. Different time of day, of course. It's uh, just quarter past one here when it was like, what was it, about six o'clock last night when Q3 finished. Hamilton goes third fastest. Verstappen in the end was only two tenths of Perez. He found time back in the final sector. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc is going quick. Through the middle sector split now. And he is up on Verstappen. Fastest middle sector of anybody. But this is going to be a tight one. Stroll goes up into sixth spot. Leclerc now is on the drag towards the line. And it's this part of the circuit where the Red Bull has been particularly strong. Leclerc still looking good, though. He'll pop the DRS open now. Final couple of meters for Leclerc. And it's provisional pole for the sprint. Three and a half minutes to go. Leclerc quickest. Perez second. Verstappen third. Here comes Carlos Sainz when he slots into fourth. Ferrari first and fourth at the moment with Perez ahead of Verstappen. But there must have been an error in that middle sector for, for Max Verstappen for him to lose such a big chunk of time. And we're about to find out what it was, I think, coming into the left-hander of turn two. Here's his radio. Yeah, I lost all the rear in the middle sector. Yeah, we saw that. Okay, he lost the rear in, or the, in the middle sector, so the replay of turn two is irrelevant that we were being seen, but being shown. But uh, yeah. Struggled in the middle sector, Verstappen. Sounds like he's got rear tyre overheating, I would guess, uh, in the middle sector, which is actually what happened to him uh, on his final run yesterday. Um, he They tried a different tyre warm-up uh, regime for his last run in Q3, um, and uh, to basically they went harder to get more temperature into the tyres, and that compromised him on his final run, and it sounds like that might have happened again just now. Well, he was doing a lot of lateral movement in a straight line. Um, and lateral movement, as we know, really generates quite a lot of heat internally into the tyre. It's the most energy that you can do in a straight line. Obviously, braking is, is massive longitudinal energy, but weaving in a straight line, maybe... Don't do that, Max. <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> the big time loss came through turns five and six. The rear got out on him coming through the left-hander of five, which meant he missed the apex for turn six. Now we've got two minutes to go. Everybody's on a cool-down lap, so they're going very slowly. They're going so slowly on circuit that the timing screen has got them classified as stopped because it's taking them so long to go through the uh, the various mini-sectors. It's also worth saying, Jack, obviously problems for both Aston Martins on that first run because neither of them have set a competitive time. Stroll two seconds off the pace, Alonso three and a half seconds off the pace. Something must have gone on there. The order currently, Leclerc, Perez, Verstappen, Sainz, Hamilton, the top five, Russell, Albon, Stroll and Alonso, the top nine. Norris not setting a lap time because he didn't have a new set of soft tyres to run. Now it's time for the final runs in sprint qualifying. Across the line comes Sergio Perez to start his final flying lap. Currently second, ahead of his teammate Verstappen. He turns into the left-hander at turn one. Out towards the wall on the exit, then comes into turn two. Hamilton is following him on circuit. The last across the line is going to be Carlos Sainz. He will be the last driver to start his flying lap. Sound you can hear is Perez coming up towards turn three. Down through the gears, turns it in. Now the right-hander of turn four. Now in towards five and six, we'll get his first sector split here, Sergio Perez. And he's two tenths down on Leclerc in the first sector. Hamilton's four tenths down on Leclerc in the first sector, but has at least done a personal best. It's not even a personal best for Sergio Perez. Verstappen's coming into turns one and two now. Perez is heading towards the castle section. But Perez is finding some time now in the middle sector as he climbs up through the hill. Swings it left, back on the throttle. Ten seconds to go, but everybody's on their final flying lap now. Verstappen is not setting the world alight in sector one either. 35 is three tenths down in sector one from his previous best, so I don't think we're going to see Verstappen at the front here. Perez pushing through 15, and he is now a hundredth away from Charles Leclerc's time. This is going to be a tight one, and Leclerc is off, I think. Leclerc's off at five and six. Leclerc's in the wall at five and six. But that might still be enough to give him pole for the sprint because Perez is driving towards the line now. Pings open the DRS. Does he beat Leclerc? He does not. It's still Leclerc on provisional pole. But Verstappen's on his way. Verstappen's coming through the middle sector. Down through the left-hander. 
of turn 15 through the middle sector split. Where is he? He's three tenths away from Charles Leclerc. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. It's a drag race now. Up through the gears. Up to 210 miles an hour. Charles Leclerc will be starting the Grand Prix tomorrow from pole position. Will he be starting the sprint race later on this afternoon from the front of the grid as well? He will. Leclerc on pole. Perez second, Verstappen third. Russell will be fourth. I think Sainz got caught up in the Leclerc incident. So he will be fifth. Hamilton sixth. Albon in seventh. Slow laps for both Aston Martins, presumably still with DRS issues, eighth and ninth. And Lando Norris will be tenth. Piastri 11th, Hulkenberg 12th, Ocon 13th, 14th Magnussen, 15th Sergeant, Joe, Bottas, Sonoda, Gasly and De Vries, the 20 drivers. But Charles Leclerc, not for the first time in his career, takes pole after a shunt. This is what happened to him, coming down into turn five. Oi, back and goes on the way in. And then a fairly heavy nudge into the, into the tech pro. Not seen anyone in the wall there, ever, personally, but he managed it. Uh, sorry for Carlos. Apologising because Carlos Sainz, the car behind, I think, will then have had the yellow flag, so I had to back off. How do you feel about it, Charlie? If a driver causes a yellow flag, should they have their best lap time deleted? I think yellow flag's all right. I think red flag is a well, different question. It, but is a yellow flag all right? Because the, the, the drivers that are then in that sector, in that mini loop or, or the general sector itself, have to slow down, and it can really put you off your rhythm. So... Uh, I agree with you, but at the same time, I, I, I disagree with you. So, P1. Good job. Good job, guys. I think the tyres were gone anyway on the second lap, but, uh, yeah, good job. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But unless it's being done on purpose, I don't think it, I don't think I, because the, it, if, if you get rid of the best driver's lap time or whatever, then well, in this incident, it wouldn't have made any difference. Leclerc was still on pole. Oh, no, because you would have got rid of his bet, so he would have been 10th on the grid. Is that fair? Because Leclerc had a crash? You're allowed to crash as a driver, aren't you? <laughs> You're asking the right person. <laughs> you don't think you should be punished every time you have a crash? No, I, I get that. I get that. But um, it's, it is a topic of discussion, I, I certainly think. Yellow flags, if you cause one, do you lose your time? It certainly works well in IndyCar. And is it something that we need to move over to European racing? Yeah, it's, it is an interesting one, for sure. Uh, Perez and Leclerc with a little high five. The Red Bulls seem to struggle with traction. I th Sergio Perez's lap looked really strong, but he just had this little moment on the exit of turn... I think it was turn two? where he just had this little wobble on traction. And, and you saw Max Verstappen as well, really struggling to apply throttle on, on lateral acceleration. Well, he will start third on the grid for the sprint later on, Max Verstappen. There are points. Leclerc could more than double his points tally today with the sprint because he's only got six points from the first three races. You get eight points for winning it. And so, uh, yeah. He could, he could double his points, Ali. It, it's a bit of a statement from Charles Leclerc and Ferrari, I think, to, to get both poles. It, it says to Red Bull, yes, you're the best, and yes, you've scored the most points, but we're going to give you a fight, and we're not giving up just yet. It's too early in the season. They're, they are here to fight, and, and that's what we want in Formula 1. We yeah. want competitiveness. We don't want Max Verstappen to get so far up the road. I hope Charles Leclerc can bring his A-game later today and tomorrow and really take the fight to the Red Bulls. Right, let's hear from the top three. Naomi Schiff is going to be speaking to them. I think we're going to be starting with the man on pole position for the sprint later on, Charles Leclerc. Charles, congratulations. You are today's sprint shootout winner. Now, hairy moments there at the end, but you managed to get the job done. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, with the soft, it was a little bit tricky because you, you get in Q3 and we haven't driven on this tire since yesterday. It's not a, uh, a long time ago, but the, diff the, the conditions are very different. So it was behaving much differently. The rear overheated on the, on the second lap. I tried to push a bit more to gain some lap time as I was behind my, uh, my, my first best, uh, best lap time. And I lost it in turn five. Uh, at the end, it doesn't have any consequence on... On, uh, on qualifying, uh, I don't know about Carlos behind me, so it's a shame if, if he was improving, but um, 
Yeah, happy with the first lap, very happy with the first lap, and now we have to uh, confirm that in the race. Now, you are the pole position sitter for tomorrow's race, but also the pole position sitter for today. Now, how are you going to you know, tackle this race? Well, we'll go for it, uh, but uh, we need also to be realistic. And until now, we have been on the back foot in the race, especially the, the Red Bull seems to be a step ahead. So uh, let's see how it is. Hopefully we have a good surprise. I think we improved the car quite a bit, uh, but today we'll have uh, more of an answer in the race to see where we are compared to them. You think you can take this battle to the Red Bulls? Oh, I'll do everything for it, and uh, we are here for that at the end. Uh, Ferrari needs to be on top, and I'll do absolutely everything to, uh, um, to win. Fantastic. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Charles Leclerc, the winner of the sprint shootout, and he will start at the front of the grid. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live. He gets a, a, a Pirelli hat, a very funky Pirelli hat for, uh, for winning the sprint shootout. I think he will never wear that in his life so thank you for joining us the uh, the sprint gets underway what 2 30 this afternoon so make sure you join us we'll be only on the bbc sport website for that one but it'll be he has <laughs> leclerc did put the hat on for about one second that's <laughs> just so he had his picture taken and now he does he does not care <laughs> oh dear yeah exactly uh, right anyway that's the end of the session we'll be back at 2.30 so um, speak to you then Leclerc will be on pole Perez Verstappen Russell and Sainz the top five as Formula One goes sprint racing again